Hello and thanks for downloading this, the third episode of The Road to Net Zero, a new podcast from the Advanced Propulsion Centre. My name is Clem Silverman and as you'll hear in just a second, this week our correspondent David James travels to Dundee in Scotland to learn more about where they're making Glasgow's hydrogen-powered bin lorry. Please subscribe to hear in more detail about the great projects we're working on at the APC and thanks for listening. The Advanced Propulsion Centre has been supporting the development of hydrogen fuel cell and hydrogen internal combustion propulsion systems. My name is David James and in this short series of interviews I'm talking to some of the leaders in the field of hydrogen transport. For this interview I travelled to Ballard Motive Solutions in Dundee to talk to Richard Kemp Harper, their strategy director, about the development of their hydrogen fuel cell refuse collection vehicle. Tell us about what you're doing as a, as a company more broadly at the moment. So we're really interested in zero emission transport, particularly address the, the harder challenges of heavy duty transport. And we think that hydrogen and fuel cell technology is a really good approach to addressing zero emissions for those sorts of vehicles. So trucks, buses, trains, um, those sorts of heavy vehicles is really where that technology makes a lot of sense. You've, you've settled on hydrogen. What were the other options we could have considered? So for zero emissions, the two options you're really talking about are battery electric vehicles and fuel cell electric vehicles. So a lot of common between those two technologies in terms of the drive system. The question, the difference is the way the energy is stored on board. So at hydrogen, you're storing the energy as, as hydrogen in generally compressed gas hydrogen tanks. And in battery electric vehicles, of course, you're storing the energy within the battery. And just talk about the pros and cons of battery electric versus hydrogen electric vehicles. So the strength of hydrogen is you get much more energy by weight. So for this vehicle, you can get twice the energy on board for the same amount of weight, or at least to be able to deliver the full payload you need with, with greater range. So there's a trade-off between efficiency, if you like, with batteries, where you've got good round trip um, efficiency for the electricity going in and out, um, and then hydrogen providing a greater performing vehicle in terms of range and duty cycle um, because you can get that much more energy on board. So behind you, you've got a refuse collection vehicle. Just talk about the genesis of that. So we've been looking for the right place for the technology as you know, to get fleets of vehicles into deployment. And there's sort of use cases where it really makes sense to do this. And the refuse collection duty cycle, it's, there's a lot of energy involved in terms of driving the bins. There's um, extended ranges. It's really hard working vehicle out every day. So it's that use case where you've got a really high demand for, for energy and just practical operations. The bins is the thing that everybody complains about if they don't get emptied every week. So the councils are really keen to see both zero emissions versions of these could address air quality in cities, but also still do the J job. So this is the practicality of getting a vehicle which can operate 16 hours a day potentially and then seven days a week and just work harder and harder to do that day job. Now as I understand it the Advanced Propulsion Centre were instrumental in doing that business case work. Absolutely so um, we explored a range of use cases for heavy duty vehicles um, using that support. There's a, a number of areas we could have looked at and there's some of the, the heavy vehicles it's a, the further off in terms of the readiness but this um, use case and, and some others are really right now in terms of um, what people are looking for. And we've been finding over the last year or more a, a really strong demand for, particularly from council saying they want to do this stuff. And yes, we've used that support to understand both the commercial case for this, but also the technical case and where the technology goes next. I think you brought to an interesting point there because I think people have got very excited about the technology I'm very excited about the, the environmental benefits, but it has to make business sense now, otherwise we just can't afford to do it, right? So I think we've got to get to that fully commercial stage. I think we're still slightly earlier for it being, you know, it's certainly not cost competitive yet with existing technology, but then you've got to weigh that against what's the costs we're experiencing in terms of health and so on of air quality and obviously carbon emissions. So we're on a trajectory to get to cost competitiveness, particularly with the price of hydrogen. And I guess the, the study that we did is helping us explore what that trajectory looks like and how we get there. How important is it for a company like Arcola to get 
support from the advanced propulsion tent? What, what does it mean, really? So the funding is great. It provides, above that though, a real focus on an emphasis on trying to get a particular job done. You can get distracted by the day job of, of actually trying to make stuff happen. Um, but actually to provide that focus on thinking about your business case, thinking about your customers, thinking about what you're trying to achieve, and where you're going as a business is really important for as strategy director i was really pleased to have the headspace if you like and the excuse and also the funding enabled us to bring in some key partners that helped us with that so we had support from a consultancy that provided a lot of insight that we wouldn't have been able to do on our own um, without that help what would it look like without the support of the advanced propulsion center it would be less focused we'd just be distracted with other things it's the sort of thing we were doing slowly over time but we just had six months let get this done get a business case get really clear about what we're doing and it just provided that greater emphasis and direction um, to get things done in a short period of time and in terms of the outcomes you've, you've got an outcome absolutely well more than a vehicle we've got a whole business case a much greater sense of what our technology roadmap looks like what our product roadmap looks like and um, where we should be focusing as a business and the sort of customers we should be targeting. And you've, you've got a customer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is going into service with Glasgow. As a follow-on, this is the prototype. We, we're going to be putting in a whole fleet of vehicles. So the production version that follows on from the learning from this will be going into, we've got a fleet of 20 that will be going in and being used in operation um, based on the, the learning we've done through this program. And what does that mean in terms of employment, supply chain, and, and getting this whole hydrogen road show on the road. Yeah, so we're here in Dundee in a, in a bit of an odd space, but we're building a facility here. So there's gonna be a whole assembly program, um, a lot of more engineers, a whole load of technicians on an old industrial site. And, and yes, we're looking at 150 jobs here, potentially to support this and other vehicles and the technology getting going. And I think, as you say, this is our real focus now is not just playing with this as a technology, let's see if it's worked, but how do we scale it up? How do we get the supply chain involved? How do we build this now into an industry rather than just a, a technology showcase piece? And how excited are you about hydrogen in proportion? Um, there's a lot going on. I think there's some key areas where it really works. I think as an industry, as a whole zero emission industry, we've got lots of opportunity now. And it's crucial that both battery electric vehicles and hydrogen vehicles play their right role. And we get both sectors, particularly in the heavy vehicle area, with both um, technologies supported to get through and, and make stuff happening to, to address the challenges we've got. And in terms of timing, strategically for the UK? How, how important is it that UK stays on the leading edge of this? Oh, it is important. You can see perhaps in battery technology, we've slightly missed the boat because a lot of it's happening in China. I think there's technologies that sit in this heavy duty vehicle space that we've still got a greater opportunity for and we've still got businesses doing this. So there's businesses in the UK making these sorts of vehicles and others of in different niches and the battery technology and the fuel cell technology needed for these is different to what you put in a passenger car so there's still an open opportunity to get stuck in and build a supply chain for those um, bits and pieces that we need to make this work now let's talk a bit more detail about the the vehicle itself just talking about the clever things that are going on in inside the vehicle yeah i i, I guess the cleverest thing is that it just looks like a normal vehicle and that actually it's not a load of kit everywhere we've packaged it really tightly the the work we've done on it has been to get a step towards making this a fully production vehicle that can deliver the performance that the customer need give the payload particularly that's needed while doing the whole zero emissions thing so packaging the batteries and the fuel cells underneath the cab getting really tight integration of everything else proving out the powertrain so that it, we know that it works, integrating with the bin body so that everything is, is tight and operational and, and does the day job. This is a prototype, but actually it's going to be in trial service and we want to test it and get Glasgow to really kick the tires and, and work out how it fits into their operation, understand the technology, be comfortable with it and get the confidence that a full fleet is going to do what they need to do to empty the bins. And in terms of the difference between a prototype vehicle and, and an early production vehicle, how important is that transition for, from a commercial point of view? 
So as an industry looking at hydrogen, I think that's the transition that we need to be making is going from the one-offs to doing fleets. And it's the stage that we're at is deployment of fleets of vehicles. And we can't be confident and say, look, this is a commercial technology until we've got that proof of having vehicles on the road doing the job in that fleet context. And I think hydrogen, it's really hard to do just one vehicle because you need the whole refueling infrastructure. If you're putting a fleet in, you can get 20 vehicles and that justifies the business case for a refueler. So actually it scales really well once you get those fleets. And I think for hydrogen, we need to get over this hump of doing the one-offs, doing fleets of these vehicles. It's happened in buses already, you know, see the, the tens, twenties, fifties of, uh, of buses going around um, across Europe. But these other vehicles, refuse collection and others, getting fleets down, getting that proof of how it operates, the practicalities. In reality, this should operate very similarly to a diesel vehicle. A few minutes to fill it up um, and off you go again. You don't need to plug it in to charge it. It's, oh, simple, easy for the, uh, the staff running the things. I think you've touched on an interesting point there about the scalability. Just talk about how hydrogen scales better than perhaps electric vehicles when we're talking about heavy duty cycles. Yeah, so it's about all about how you get your energy into your depot, in a sense. We'd say that probably a minimum number of vehicles to justify a refuel is probably about 20. So 300 to 500 kilograms of hydrogen a day, that can come in on a tanker. And you can scale that up and bring in more deliveries or make it on site. There's just a greater scalability. You can move the energy around in some ways more easily. And the sort of models we're talking about around Scotland is that we've got a wind turbine here, renewable sites are looking for the stronger business case um, to be able to put in particularly more renewables and hydrogen plays a key role in that. So you've got centralized production of hydrogen at say a wind farm and then moving that around as a milk ground around several sites. So you've got then a, a pipeline of trucks delivering hydrogen to a number of refuelers and you can start to see it scaling quite quickly using that route to getting fleets of vehicles around. And so it's, yeah, it's all about that route to getting energy in, into sites is, uh, is the key bit of this. And hydrogen provides that parallel um, way of moving energy around, if you like, to electricity. If scale is fundamental to the, the success of hydrogen, what needs to happen to get to scale? What's the next step? So I think demonstrating fleets uh, and proving that operations is key. We've got conversations going on with local authorities all over the country saying, we'd love one of these. Can we try one? Can we see what Glasgow are doing and learn from that? So I think that's a hump we'll get over. And then at this stage in the industry, there's a, there is a funding gap to get these fleets in. So there's some support needed, particularly again for authorities to support the purchase of these vehicles, which are more expensive. And I think to make it commercial, what we need to prove then is the business case, because we think this is a really long lasting vehicle. It might be expensive to buy, but it'll last longer than a diesel truck because the equipment, the technology is designed for heavy duty use. There's less moving parts. It's not going to wear out as quickly. So we think this will last a long time and do a greater, a better job in the long term and provide better total cost of ownership. But that takes years to prove. So we've actually got to do this and do the learning to demonstrate that and show how this really works in practice. One of the issues around hydrogen is, is the cost of yeah. the hydrogen. Is that something that's solvable, do you think? So it, it's coming down. Again, that's all about scale as well. So there are actually a, a number of companies that we're talking to who are saying, we would love to supply you with hydrogen at a decent price once you can get fleets on the road. And so I think that will happen quite quickly. With What we're seeing is particularly renewables developers saying, I'd love to put in a new wind farm, but I'm not sure about the price of electricity and does it justify the business case? Actually, I can make hydrogen um, as a, an additional part of my business case for the renewables. And you see it reinforcing the development of new renewable capacity by saying, OK, let's add some molecule production to my electron production that I'm doing with the, the, the wind farm. Yeah, it's something that I've heard about a bit is there's, there's quite a few solar and wind projects that could go right now but they can't because they can't get the grid connection yes i think that's right and even if they can get the grid connection there's a 
Ooh, it's slightly marginal on the business case. Have I got the right, do the numbers stack up? And hydrogen just provides that bit extra that helps them get over that line and uh, a, an alternative revenue stream to, to add to the electrons. And as well as the benefits that hydrogen production, green hydrogen, hydrogen production brings to um, the electricity grid in terms of balancing and uh, capturing energy that you would otherwise waste or whatever to support the intermittency piece. Give us a quick view of the, the future. What's, what's next? What's next steps? What needs to happen? Lots of these fleets everywhere. I think then taking this technology that we've proved out in this application into the pipeline of other trucks. So I think the longer range interurban delivery sector and sort of wholesale logistics is a really interesting area. Refrigeration, again, where you've got a lot of energy demands. I think that's a sector that has a whole load of vehicles similar size to this, which um, large numbers of them running around that are going into city centres and could do with taking the emissions away as well as reducing the carbon impact. So I think that's a really interesting sector to go to. Um, and there's probably others that we've identified in the study that would give us opportunities to scale up the technology to the next level of power to do bigger vehicles and I think there's a roadmap then of going up from this sort of 26 tonne application up to the 32 and 44 sort of big trucks that you'll see in the, the next three to five years. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this interview. To find out more about hydrogen transport and the work of the Advanced Propulsion Centre in supporting low carbon mobility, visit apcuk.co.uk.